we just got done talking about area. Now we have to take a look at what happens if the shape you have is not on the formula sheet. So just a quick review. My title is Area of Irregular Shapes. Irregular meaning the opposite of regular. If I have a regular rectangle, I can look at the shape and know that it's going to be on my yellow formula sheet and it will tell me what to do to figure out the area. We also want to start including with the area is the perimeter. So remember, area is the number of squares it takes to cover an object. So if I would look at this, I could count up the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. How many squares it takes. We do know the faster way is to use the formulas on the formula sheet and do some multiply. So keep in mind, multiply typically is going to help me find the area faster. The difference is perimeter, we remember, and I don't spend too much time because it's perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around an object. If I add up all the side lengths, what is the distance around? So we have to remember that perimeter is going to be addition. Now let's take a look at what happens when a shape you are given is not on the formula sheet. Now the struggle comes as this. What if I get a shape like this that does not match any of my yellow formula shapes? Typically we would look at the shape and find it on the yellow formula sheet and say, oh, okay, it's a triangle, so I'll use one half times base times height. What if it's not there? A lot of you have done this at some point. You say, okay, let's break it into smaller shapes that I already know. In theory, what you're going to do is take the initial shape and cut it into shapes that you do know. Because I only have a certain amount of cardboard here, it doesn't matter which way I cut it, I still will have the same amount. I'm not throwing any of it away. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it like this. Now if you notice, I have not lost any cardboard, so it's still the same shape. But what I did is I broke it into two shapes I do know the formula for. You can call it shape A and shape B. They're both rectangular. This probably looks more like a square than this does. Find the area of this, find the area of this, join them back together, and you are done. You have found the total area of this shape. So let's take a look. Can you write this shape down? 8 is the side length, 5 is across, 3 and 12. Now I'm going to do this a little differently. All right. Here we go. I'm going to cut it. On paper, I'm going to draw a cut line. A cut line is going to be a dash line. Now that represents the same way I cut the paper. Let's call one shape shape A, one shape B. This will help clarify later so there's no confusion. You could have cut it this way and had A up top and B as a long piece. It doesn't matter. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to redraw the shapes but separately. Let's take shape A. I'm going to redraw it. Shape A is this. Now what I'm going to do is put a dash to represent the same cut mark as I did on the paper. Remember my cut mark is right about there. This is shape A. I'm going to fill in all the numbers. 8, 5, this little segment is 3. What does that make the cut piece worth? The left side is 8. The right side also needs to be 8. This little mark is 3. What is the cut piece? That's right, it has to be 5. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. I don't know what the bottom is. If the top is 5, what does the bottom have to be? 5. This is important later, that's why I'm doing it. Alright, let's take shape B. Let's draw it over.
shape B. Can I fill in any numbers? If I look at this picture, I don't have any numbers. And yes, I do want my cut piece the same way. And if I wanted to, I could slide it back up and glue it back in on the dash piece. It doesn't say how far this is, so I have to do some calculating. Compare your pictures. This piece was 5. If this little piece is 5, what must this piece be to give me a total of 12? Well, it used to be 12. I cut off 5. What am I left with? I'm left with 7. So go back over here, fill in 7. The bottom is 7. What else is 7? The top is 7. Okay, let's look at the dashed piece. The up and down measurement, I don't know. Well, if I can figure out the dashed piece, I can figure out this because they're the same distance. Dashed piece already I know is 5. Carry it over. Oh, this is now 5. What does this piece have to be? Oh, 5. 5, 5. You must know the measurements of each piece of the polygon. You must have all the sides filled in. If you break it into smaller pieces, it will be easier to look at. You'll get faster at doing it once you start a couple. Okay, I need two things, area and perimeter. Let's do area first. This is a rectangle. How do I find area of a rectangle? There it is, length times width. L times W. 5 times 8, length, width. A equals 5 times 8. Should I write this step, Mr. Long? Yes, you should. A equals 5 times 8 is 40. What is my label? Squares, Mr. Long. Squares it is. That is the area of shape A. Shape B, area, length times width, L times W. Should I write this next calculation? Yes, you should. 7 times 5, 7 times 5. A equals 35. What is your label? I think it's squares. It is squares. Why am I not done? What's the answer? Is it 40 or is it 35? You must add them together because it was all one piece before. 40 plus 35. Where does this go? It goes down here in the last line. 40 plus 35 equals 4 and 3 is 7. 5. What's my label? Squares. Area of shape A plus area of shape B equals total area of the object. Now let's take a look at perimeter. Perimeter is distance around. Distance around the outside of the object. Now watch what happens. You still can use your little shapes. What side do you think I should not count? What side was not part of the initial outside when I had shape A and shape B? What piece was not part of the outside? That's right, the cut line. The cut line does not count. So look at your shapes. What number should I not count from this? Don't count the five, that's the cut piece. Don't count five, that's the cut piece. What numbers do I add? Five, three, five, eight. What shape, what numbers do I add from shape B? Seven, five, seven. Now I'll cut you a break. I don't need to see all the adding. Okay? But if you do show it, it's easier for me to figure out what's wrong with it. I'm going to bypass writing all that. I'm going to give my brain a break because it's the weekend. 8 plus 8 plus 5. 7, 5, and 7. 14 plus 5 equals. Your answer should be 40 when you add them all up. 
What is the label for perimeter? Is it squares? No. Is it cubes? No. It is distance around, which would be feet, inches, meters, miles, centimeters, hectometers, anything like that. So we'll probably leave it blank because it probably won't be labeled. Take the shape, cut it, split into separate pieces. Label all the sides. Calculate area, calculate area, add them up. Cross off the dashed measurements because they're not part of the perimeter. Add up all the distance around and you found your perimeter. This shape we cut into two. You may have to cut it into three. Do you think it's a good idea to cut it into 40 shapes? Yeah, I don't think so either because that means you would have 40 of these. When you do this work, I will ask to see your individual shapes with your numbers, with your individual formulas, added area equals this. Your perimeter, I'll bypass the adding and just have you put the answer. Please listen to the instructions. Good luck.